I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on quadratic functions. We have an excellent question here where we are going to maximize the area for the given perimeter. The question here is you are designing a pentagonal shaped play area as shown in the diagram with 30 meter fence. What dimensions will maximize the area? Write exact values. So let me sketch one here. Uh, so we'll have a triangle on the top in this pentagon and a rectangle like this, right? So, so that is what is given to us. I'm just joining this with a dotted lines and we are also given that these are equal sides. So this is an equilateral triangle right on the top and that is a rectangle, correct? So, so that is how the sides are. You can always pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Now we want to maximize the area. We are given 30 meter of fence. So we'll assume that there is no fence in between. So that dotted line indicates that's already is only on the boundary lines. Okay. So let us say that each equivalent triangle is of X length. In that case, this length here will be x for the rectangle also. And let us say y is the width of the rectangle. So that becomes the dimensions. Now from the given perimeter of 30 meters, total fence length is 30 meters. This combination should be equal to 30. So we can write uh, 1, 2, 3 x's and 2 y's. So 3 x plus 2 y is equal to 30. Um, now we need to maximize area. So definitely area is in terms of x and y. So it's a good idea to isolate one of the variables. So we'll isolate y here. So what we get here is let's say 2y equals to 30 minus 3x or y is equal to 15 minus 3 by 2x. So we have divided both these terms by 2. So we get y equals to 15 minus 3 over 2x. So we'll call this as our equation number 1. Now let's look into area. So area over here is equal to area of this rectangle which is x times y plus area of the triangle. Now what is the area of equilateral triangle? Well, that you should understand. For equilateral triangle, we know all the sides are equal. This is also x. So if I drop a perpendicular here, right? If this is a perpendicular, in that case, this side is half of x. And if you use Pythagorean theorem, x square minus half of x whole square square root, you will get this side which will be how much square root 3 over 2. So the height will be square root 3 over 2x. Correct? So this actually you could get very easily using Pythagorean theorem. So anyway, let me show you this calculation also here for the height. So we could have height equals to square root of x square minus half x whole square, correct? So that is what you get, which is square root of x square minus 1 over 4 x square. Now that is taking 4 as common denominator, you get 4 x square minus x square over 4 square root. And 4 x square minus x square is 3 x square over 4 square root. Now x square could be taken out, square root of 4 is 2. So what we get here is square root 3 over 2 times x. Clear? So that is how you can actually find height. Now when we are doing this, let me just make one more column here and add more information. That is area of triangle. Area of triangle is half base times height. And now since we know that height is square root 3 over 2 and base is the total base of x length, right? So we could write this as half base is x for us times height which is square root 3 over 2. 
times x correct so this becomes the height for us as written here and we know base b is equal to x so the area can now be written as x times y y is 15 minus 3 over 2x and half times half is 1 fourth so we get square root 3 over 4 and x times x is x square perfect so i hope this step is absolutely clear so that becomes an expression of area in only one variable x so what we did here was that we substituted this value for y correct okay? and that is what you get perfect now since we have only one variable to find that's not difficult so let's open this bracket up so we have 15 x minus 3y2 x square plus uh, square root 3 well this should have been uh, let me check yeah half 4 this is okay 4 x square perfect so we get our expression for area in one variable now how to maximize this so the idea now here is to maximize to maximize what I will do is I'll just factor out x so uh, let's see what we get after that so if I factor out x from here then what do I get within brackets I get 15 here right and these terms give us the terms in x squared now uh, I could have combined this before factoring out anyway we'll combine it now so let me write down square root 3 first the positive term square root 3 over 4 x square now we'll write with x and here we have minus 3 over 2x so we'll just figure this out okay so what we get here as x times 15 and taking 4 as a common denominator right taking 4 as a common denominator we go write this as square root 3 x minus 2 times 3 is 6 right we are taking 4 as a common denominator so we get this expression for area now to maximize we can see these are the two factors correct so we have two factors here to maximize we'll find their zeros so this factor gives us one zero and the other factor gives us the next zero so so what we get here is a zero for x equals to zero and we'll just calculate what will this give us right so let's find out let me make some room for further calculations okay so here we have 15 plus square root 3 x minus 6 x over 4 equals to 0 correct okay. now to get the solution let me take all these terms to the right side so we get 15 equals 2 so when I take it to the right side it becomes negative so I could write this as 6x minus square root 3x correct over 4 so let's cross multiply so if I cross multiply 4 times 15 is 60 we get 60 equals 2 let me take x common and I get here 6 minus square root 3 so clearly I get my value of x now so what is x equals to x is equals to 60 divided by 6 minus square root 3 do you see that so we finally get the value of x as sixty divided by six minus square root three correct now 
60 divided by 6, 6 square minus 3 gives us the second zero for the given parabola, right? So, so if you think about it, uh, let me sketch the parabola on the side to explain the situation. So the parabola is going to be opening downwards, kind of like this, where one of the zeros, which we just found here, is at the origin. The other one is at 60 over 6 minus, so this one is at 60 over 6 minus square root 3, correct? Where will the maximum be? Maximum will be right in the center, midway between the two, correct? So midway between the two, the value for the maximum will be half of this, that is half of 60 is 30. So we get 30 over 6 minus square root 3. Now since we need the answers in exact value, I'm not using calculator, we'll just write this as 6 minus square root 3. Now, strictly speaking, I should be rationalizing it, right? Okay. Now, so that is very important to understand here. Now, you will realize that as far as our parable is concerned, the coefficient of x squared is actually negative. Do you see that negative? Now, this, is, this number is smaller than 3 over 2. This is 1.5 and that is much smaller. So, we definitely have a parabola which opens downwards. So we have a peak here at x equals to 30 over 6 over square root 3. So we get for maximum area, x is equal to 30 over 6 minus square root 3. Is that correct? Now, we need to find dimensions. That is to say, we need to find y value also. Second, we should actually rationalize this. Perfect. So we'll take it on the next sheet now. But major portion of the solution has been done. I hope you understand this part. So let's move on and find the value of y and also rationalize this solution. So now let us continue. We already found that the x value is equal to 30 over 6 minus square root 3. And we know that y is equal to 15 minus uh, 3 over 2x. Okay, so that is the relation. Now it is always a good practice to rationalize. Now for some of you who, you know, who want to just leave it here, they could do that. But in this particular example, I will extend and rationalize. So x basically is equal to 30 over 6 minus square root 3. What are we doing? We are doing rationalization. So I'm just writing here rationalizing. So when you rationalize, you have to multiply and divide by the conjugate, right? So the conjugate of the denominator is 6 plus square root 3. Divide by 6 plus square root 3. So that gives you 30 times 6 plus square root 3 divided by a square minus b square, which is 36 minus 3. So that is 30 times 6 plus square root 3 over 33. You can divide both by 3. You get 10 times 6 plus square root 3 over 11. Now this is a very important step since many times in multiple choice questions that could be your choice, not this. So I hope you understand and appreciate why we've gone a step ahead, right? So that could be a choice in multiple choice questions, correct? Now it happens like this. So for y, the value is 15 minus 3 over 2 of this value, which is 10 over 11 times 6 plus square root 3, right? Now you could simplify this. Uh, dividing by 2, we get... 15 here on the numerator, right? 2 times 5. So that gives you the y value as 15 minus 5 times 3 is also 15, uh, 15 over 11, in fact, times 6 plus square root 3. Correct? Now you can take 
15 common for the simplify kind of like this 1 minus 6 plus square root 3 or 11 right now so that can be written as 15 times 11 minus 6 minus square root 3 over 11 right so that is 15 so we get 11 minus 6 as 5 minus square root 3 over 11 correct so so that is the answer for y and therefore we get our solution which is the dimensions are x is equals to 10 over 11 times 6 plus square root 3 and y is equal to uh, 15 over 11 times 5 minus square root 3. Perfect. So that is how this question should be solved. I hope these steps are absolutely clear. I'd like you to go through them once again, especially how to rationalize and then write down the answers. Since many times, if given in multiple choice, you may not be able to match the answer since your answer was not rationalized. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you really like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.